Welcome back to Shadow House the Gathering. Um, today I'm going to be reading chapters 19 and 20. We can see that things are really starting to um, get pretty strange inside Shadow House. Rooms are bursting into flames. These strange children in masks um, seem to be haunting all of the children. Um, so it's definitely getting a little bit extra creepy. So let's get started. Chapter 19. Marcus was lost in an ocean of sound. The piano melody swelled as he danced his fingers across the keys and pressed his feet against the pedals. Marcus could hear the musician's tune a millisecond before he brought it to life. It felt as if they were playing a duet. The ballroom where he sat was a hazy memory. His head was filled with pictures of home, of kind friends and family, of the scent of Duke's wet fur after a walk in the rain of the sound of the calliope during the county fairs on Labor Day weekends, of his mother and his siblings sitting in the darkness of the auditorium's first rows, memories that were so, now so entangled with the musician's tunes that Marcus couldn't distinguish one sense from the other. That serenity was shattered when a group burst through the ballroom doorway, shouting for his attention. Marcus lifted his hands from the keys and opened his eyes, feeling as if he'd been bumped out of a dream. Poppy and Dash were struggling to carry Dylan between them. His arms were stretched between their shoulders, his feet practically dragging. Marcus stood up, shocked, pushing the bench back with a squeal that mixed with the reverberation left over from his shattered melody. What's wrong with him? We don't know, said Dash, his eyes huge with worry. He practically fainted on the stairs again. This is all my fault. Dylan fell to his knees, holding his head. As the last of the echo seeped into the woodwork and faded away, he finally looked up. I'm sorry, he said, with no trace of his former cockiness. I don't know what happened to me. I told you to come find me if you felt strange, Dash said, crouching beside him. Dylan winced. I didn't feel strange until I found you, so please stop shouting at me. Where were you guys? Marcus asked. Upstairs, said Poppy. The music led us down to you. There are other people here, said Dylan, kids wearing masks. I think they're messing with us, playing tricks. He glanced at Dash. You saw another one too, asked Dash. Dylan nodded, swallowing hard as if he were fighting nausea. Dash's mouth flattened. The rabbit-faced boy we saw earlier attacked me, and Poppy said a cat girl came after her. We need to get out of here. Poppy jumped in. Upstairs I found an old office filled with files. I think this building was an orphanage once. All the paperwork, for decades, was signed by its director. He has the same last name as me, Caldwell. One more reason to just run, said Dash, edging toward the row of windows on the other side of the room. Come on! That is weird, said Marcus, crossing his arms. Kind of unbelievably weird. He wished they would leave him alone so he could sit down again at the piano and play. He wanted that warm feeling back, the pleasant memories, the safety of it all. Maybe everyone should just calm down and talk this out. It sounds very confusing. But that wasn't even the weirdest part, said Dash. There was a fire, and Poppy got locked in the room, and then... Wait, said Dylan. There's a fire upstairs? Not anymore, said Poppy. It went out. Marcus raised an eyebrow. And then, Dash went on, when we were trying to find our way back to the foyer, the hallways kept moving. The hallways? Marcus crossed his arms. I'm sorry. That's not possible. Dash looked at Poppy. Am I lying? Poppy shook her head, blushing. She followed Dash to the line of windows. Do you think all of this could be part of the horror movie? Dylan asked. His voice was low and strained. No, said Dash. And you don't either. There's something seriously wrong with this place. Dash made a beeline toward the French doors. I am seriously creeped out. It's time to leave, and I don't care what we all came here for. Agreed. Poppy exhaled on a shaky breath. There's nothing here for any of us. My great aunt, Marx's school, the film shoot, it's all just... She hesitated, glancing around the ballroom. Where is Azumi? Marcus looked behind him. She was just here, wasn't she? Not when we came in, Dash said. When did you last see her? I'm not sure. Marcus walked to the doorway and peered into the hall, glancing in both directions. I was caught up playing the piano. I thought she was listening to me. How could you let her out of your sight? Dylan demanded. Were you really that wrapped up in playing a stupid piano? 
She's a big girl, said Marcus. She can do what she wants. Poppy sighed. Not in this house she can't. Here, we're like m mice in a maze. It's not my fault she's gone. Dash grabbed the handles of the French doors. You guys can hang around waiting for a zoomy, but I'm out. But when he pulled down on the handles, they wouldn't budge. He struggled for a few moments before backing away, looking for a latch or a lock that he could release. What about Dell? asked Dylan, coming up behind Dash. Didn't you hear Poppy? Dash shouted, moving toward the piano. She said Dell doesn't exist, and I believe she's right. He dragged the piano bench several feet back toward the door. Poppy's eyes were wide and scared. I tried to smash a window upstairs with a chair, but it wouldn't break, she whispered. Dash tossed it at the glass anyway. It bounced off, clattering to the floor with a raucous echo. Marcus ran back into the room, shocked. See, said Poppy. I can't believe this. Dash tried to toss the bench several more times, but the door remained intact. But the email, so, said Dylan quietly, the voicemail. We heard his voice. Nobody paid him any attention, even as he stomped his foot. Am I invisible? We came in through the front door, said Marcus. He tried forcing himself to remain calm, but the fright of the others was slowly infecting him. We could leave that way, too. I don't think it'll be any different, said Poppy. She seemed to be fighting against tears again. How would we even find our way back there, asked Dash. Marcus shrugged, by going to look for it. You didn't see what we saw upstairs, said Dash. The hallways were moving. The whole house keeps changing shape. The group stared at Dash for a moment. If it doesn't want us to leave, I don't think we can. What do you mean, if it doesn't want us to leave, said Dylan. How can a house not want us to leave? We have to find a zoomy before we do anything else, said Poppy heading toward the hallway. Right? I mean, maybe she'll already have found a way out. Let's try for the front door, said Marcus evenly. Maybe we'll run into a zoomy. We can figure out what to do from there. I already know what we can do from there, said Dash, making his way back across the room in a huff. We can go. He took his brother's arm and disappeared into the hallway. Chapter 20 Marcus shook his head as Poppy head at Poppy and followed the twins. Me and Azumi found a whole bunch of stuff that made it pretty clear this place is a school. A boarding school, like with uniforms and a big kitchen with silverware and food trays and, and a pantry with enough food to feed an entire orphanage, Poppy interrupted, her voice growing higher. That doesn't sound so different from a boarding school. I mean, right? That was what I found upstairs. Files and files and files. Poppy blinked and gathered herself. Ahead, Dash and Dylan were rushing side by side down the hallway. The light at the end of the hallway looked familiar. Hopefully it was coming from the grand foyer. Please tell me we're all thinking the same thing, she said quietly. I don't want to feel like the one weirdo here. And what should we all be thinking, asked Dylan over his shoulder. That Larkspur is haunted, said Poppy. The girl that I saw walked through fire. How is that possible? And she spoke to me. She said, you came. You actually came. As if she'd been expecting me. What if these kids in masks are making us see, feel, and hear things that aren't real? Or that were real once? I don't know. I have no clue how hauntings work. All three boys stopped and stared at her, not moving, as if too frightened to agree. Marcus touched her elbow and Poppy flinched. I think maybe you should find a place to sit, he said. Poppy shook him off. No, I've seen things before, really strange things, and I'm beginning to wonder if those things have to do with why I'm here. What kind of things? asked Dylan. Poppy closed her eyes briefly and shook her head. I always thought of her as if she were a friend, my only friend. Her who? Marcus asked. Was it Poppy's imagination, or had Marcus gone pale? Promise you won't laugh? We promise, said Dash. Poppy took a minute. She kept the secret clenched inside herself for so long that it was almost an effort to let it out. A girl. She stands behind me whenever I look in a mirror. Poppy locked eyes with Dash. He had to believe her. My whole life I've seen her. My mother, she left me when I was five. I grew up in a group home, so this girl was special to me. Dash raised an eyebrow and glanced at his brother, who looked away. Poppy swallowed her nerves. The girl was always smiling, always warm, until I found my great aunt's letter. 
Then she changed. In fact, when I reached Larkspur's gate, I'm pretty sure she's what grabbed me and threw me to the ground. That's where you found me, Marcus. Marcus wouldn't look at her. I thought she turned on me, Poppy went on, jealous or something. But she wasn't trying to hurt me. She was trying to stop me from coming here. Dylan looked revolted. That's as creepy as... I don't even know what. But, but you believe me? Marcus wouldn't meet Poppy's eyes. His own musician had gone silent for the moment, but Marcus remembered the therapist and the threat of medication. He remembered how he'd forced himself to keep the musician a secret so that he could keep the music in his life. Marcus balled his fists. Poppy had said she didn't want to be the weirdo here. Well, neither did he. Not really, he heard himself say. Poppy looked at him with wide, shocked eyes. It suddenly struck Marcus that what everyone was suggesting, to leave this place, to give up on everything each of them had hoped to find here, would bring him back to Ohio, to his ordinary life where his siblings and classmates just didn't understand jazz or classical music, to his mother who hated listening to him practice because of her memories of her dead brother. He hadn't realized until this moment how much he needed to stay at Larkspur, to believe that this was the music school he was always meant to attend. His musician's tune had proven this, hadn't it? He'd never felt more truly at home as he had playing the melody on the ballroom piano. The twins glanced at each other, unsure what to say. Marcus went on. Have you ever seen a doctor about these visions? Poppy scowled. The girl's not a vision. She's... It's hard to explain. I mean, it sounds pretty simple to me, said Marcus, hating himself. People sometimes hallucinate. Was Dylan hallucinating? Poppy asked. Her face was flaming. Was Dash? She turned toward the foyer and continued walking. The boys followed. I don't know, Marcus shouted, but they're not the ones who've seen imaginary girls standing behind them in mirrors their whole lives. I told you, she's not imaginary, Poppy yelled. Here we are, Dash cried out as they made their way into the foyer, the main entrance. He raced to the solid double doors, grappling with the handles. But just like in the ballroom, the doors would not give. But this is how he came in, said Dylan, moving toward the tall, thin windows beside the door, peering out of it. How are they locked now? He smacked the pane hard with his knuckles. There was a loud thud, and Dylan groaned. The glass did not shatter. This way, said Dash. The group rushed to follow him into the game room. He went for the closest window lock, but the lever wouldn't turn. None of them would. This is so messed up, said Dylan, grabbing the wire bingo globe off the nearby table, the plastic letters rattling inside it. It was heavy. It took two hands to arc it back behind his head and then whip it at the closest window. The globe hit it with enough force to snap a couple of wires, but the glass didn't break. The little red balls inside spilled onto the floor, rolling in all directions, looking like beads of blood. I don't understand, said Dylan. He moved from window to window, pounding on the glass. What about the door's hinges, Poppy asked. Can we take it apart that way? Dash ran back to the entry. There are no hinges, he called out. How can a door not have hinges, asked Marcus. They're gone. Dash returned to the game room and threw his hands into the air. How can any of this be happening? Poppy grabbed the back of one of the game room couches. Maybe we could use the furniture to make some sort of battering ram. A battering ram? said Marcus, shaking his head. This isn't a video game, Poppy. It was just a thought. I don't think anything we do will get these doors or windows open, said Dash, his voice strained and trembling. Poppy is right. was right. It's this place. Or those kids or something they wanted us here and now they won't let us go a wave of cold fear grabbed at the four kids and for a moment all they could do was stand there shuddering frozen in place and that concludes chapter 20 thanks so much for tuning in i'll see you tomorrow